All right, here we go. This is uh, Math 2, Unit 13, Lesson 1, looking at Form G for the homework help. That's what Buchanan passed out um, at least this year. And I'm going to look at a couple sample problems here, looking at experimental and theoretical probability. You do need to know the difference between both of those that will show up on your um, unit test this time. The difference essentially is this. You're looking at probability, or they're both probability, um, and experimental is what happens when you have like actual data for example, you actually did the the, the um, you know drew drew number tiles out of a bag, or you threw a darts at a dartboard, and or picked out colored marbles, whatever it might be. The experimental is like the actual; it took place, it happened. So you'll have real data here that that's what goes with experimental. Theoretical is like if it was to happen, what would what would you expect to see as a result? So this is like a theory of what would happen if you tried it out, and this one actually happened. That's kind of the difference there. So, for example, we start off with the first one here, and they give us a set of numbers here because it says you roll a standard number cube 10 times. So this has actually happened. That makes it an experiment that's already taken place. Okay, it's happened 10 times. So rolling a 5, we can see here that there's one 5 that happened out of 10 times. Mirror probabilities, you can write them as a fraction, you can write them as a percent, and you can write them as a decimal. For today, we're going to leave them as a fraction here, just for our purposes. But a, but a probability can be written all three ways. All right. And the other thing to kind of keep in mind as we're talking about probability today is, is that a probability is going to be always between 0 and 1. So a 0 likelihood means it's not going to happen at all, and this is like a 100% chance that it will happen. So your probabilities will always be in that range. If you get something bigger than 1 or a fraction greater than 1, you probably did something wrong. If you get a negative number, you did something wrong, okay? So we have 1 tenth, which comes between 0 and 1. We're probably rolling a 5. The probability of rolling an even number here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 even numbers in our experiment. So we would say that there's a probability of 7 out of 10 of rolling an even number in this experimental probability because it actually took place. Now when we move on to the theoretical, the theoretical means that now I don't know, I don't have any data, there's no data here to work with, so it's just what would or probably what should happen. And with a regular die um, and rolling one, I have the choice of a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, and a 6. Those are my likely outcomes if everything is random. Um, so the chance of rolling a 5 is really, in theory, 1 out of 6. That's what it should be. In terms of rolling an even number, if everything is equal there, I have a 2, a 4, a 6. So the odds of rolling an even number would be 3 out of 6 in theory. That's theoretical. And I could, of course, reduce that down to a half. All right? So that's the difference between experimental and theoretical. Theoretical is the theory of what should happen. It doesn't always work that way, but that's what should happen. Moving down here, we have a problem where we have several things happening. We have two red ping pong balls. So I'm going to make a little chart here. I'm going to write down, um, that's right here. So red, I have two. Green, I have three ping pong balls. Blue, I have three blue. And I have one yellow ping pong ball which means I have a total of six, seven, eight, nine altogether. And so I want to make sure I have my data points here. So ask yourself, is that theoretical or experimental? Hopefully you go with experimental because we have real data points. So the probability of it not being red, here's my red, my red is two, would be the total of everything else. What's not red? A three, a three, and a one, the green, blue, and yellow. So not red, I have seven, those add up, 7 out of 9 are my chance of it not being red. Okay, does that make sense? So the chance of it being red, so the probability, if I want to write down probability red, I write down P for probability of red would be actually 2 out of 9. That's my probability of red. So you can write it different ways. This is kind of the way we write this out. Probability, not red, and you count them up and you see what you have available for you. Okay, let's take a look at one more problem on number 16 on the back side. Number 16 is still looking at experimental and theoretical. And so the game is played where students throw bean bags at this target right there. Okay, each region is the same size. Every bean bag hits a target. For one game, the section A was hit six times, B3, C8, and D5, which means I have an experimental data set here. 
So if I was to write this out, I could say, all right, A, B, C, and D, and A it said was 6, B it said was 3, C was 8, and D was 5. So this is my experimental data set, and I have a little chart already made there. So the experimental probability of hitting D is 5 out of how many times was it hit? I have to add this up here. So 6 plus 3 is 9 plus 8. 9 plus 8 is 17 plus 5 gives me 22. So it's 5 out of 22 is my experimental uh, probability of hitting section D. Now theoretical though, how, what's my chance if everything is equal here, I actually have 1, 2, 3, 4 sections and D makes up one of those sections. So the chances of hitting it for real would be one out of four, but in this case, it happened to be five out of 24. Now, you don't have to do this, but the reason we do the difference is, if I use a calculator, if I do five divided by 22, I end up with a 0.22, if I write it as a percent, 22.7%, whereas in theory, it should be a 25% chance. So the difference between the experimental and the theoretical, they're very similar, but you can see there's actually a higher chance of getting a D than what actually happened. So that's just kind of the way things work. All right, that's it for that lesson here. I will say that when you look down on number 18 to 23, you have two number cubes here. This would be um, a, a way of making this. We'll talk about later about a two-way frequency chart. And so you'd write down your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you write down a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you're going to look at the intersections for what those points are going to be. So one, a 1 plus 1 is a 2, a 2 plus 1 is a 3. And you see what happens when you roll the dice multiple times to get these various outcomes here. Um, this frequency two-way frequency table here is something that will show up on your test as well and many other times. Hope that helps a bit. Thanks.